Hello, and welcome to our webcast, MBA Student Insights, a Q&A with the Hispanic Business Student Association. My name is Anna Leva, and I'm a first year MBA student here at the GSB and co-president of the Hispanic Business Student Association. I'm joined by Danny Reyes, Madison Oviedo, Maitane Sagaswi, and David Vasquez, who are also MBA students here and members of the Hispanic Business Student Association. We'll be talking about our journey to the GSB, the student experience here on campus, and HBSA, of course, and answering as many of your questions as we can. To submit a question to us, simply click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please note that we won't be answering questions about admissions, the application process, or financial aid. So if you have questions about those topics, submit them directly to admissions by emailing mba.admissions at gsb.stanford.edu. We'll be starting with some introductions. Danny, Madison, Maithana, and David, please start by sharing a little bit about you, where you're from, what you were doing before the GSB, and what your plans are for after graduation. Danny, let's start with you. Sure. So, hi everyone. I'm Danny Reyes. I am from Miami, Florida. Um, come from Cuban Cuban immigrant parents. Uh, bef before the GSB, I, I was I studied business undergrad at Penn. Um, then I worked in consulting at BCG out of their Chicago office. Um, spent two years there, and then. I uh, worked for a year at the PGA Tour, um, where I spent another year, and um, after that came to the GSB, and then after GSB, I'm looking to um, stay with BCG in, in consulting um, and um, work on some, some, some long-term plans to, to work in the sports industry. Thanks, Jenny. Madison? Sure. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Madison Obiato. I'm from Dallas, Texas. My dad is a second generation American from, um, his family was originally from Mexico, northern Mexico specifically. I studied ethnic studies at Brown with a focus on migration studies. After, I'm sorry, after Brown, I went on a Fulbright to Mexico where I worked with nonprofit organizations and taught English at the law school. After that, I did a hard pivot to the private sector with crisis PR at a small firm in New York. Um, after the GSB, I'm hoping to go into consulting for a couple of years and longer term start my own nonprofit focused on uh, immigrant communities in the U.S. Thanks, Madison. Maitane? So I grew up in Mexico City until I was 18. I did my undergrad in the U.K. I studied politics, philosophy, and economics at Warwick. And then subsequently, I joined the financial services industry, um, working for a bank in Asia and the Middle East. Um, and then the GSB, of course. Now, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do afterwards, so I'm experimenting with like different industries and locations to kind of define exactly what's the next step. Great. Great. And David? Hi, everyone. My name is David Vasquez. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, where I went to Columbia for undergrad, where I studied economics. After Columbia, I went to investment banking. Then I did some stint in private equity. Then I actually pivoted to nonprofit, and I did that for two years. Um, at the GSB, I'm also a joint degree student with a master's in public policy, and long term, I'm hoping to do uh, social impact investing and hopefully pivot my career between public and private sectors. Awesome. As for me, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. My mom is from Mexico, my dad's from Nicaragua, and before coming to the GSB, I, was, I studied international relations at Princeton undergrad and then worked in enterprise tech sales. Um, and after the GSB, I will probably be running my family business. Okay, so now that we have introductions out of the way, let's start with your questions. Question one, what made you decide to apply to and attend Stanford over other schools? Popcorn? Um, so for me, uh, the, first, the first thing that uh, kind of really caught my attention was uh, the, how dynamic the environment was here, being close to um, a, you know, the, the tech space. Um, but the more I started to know the community here, uh, what really made my decision to come here was uh, just being aware of how like supportive the community was, about how um, that people had done like really interesting things, but like also not so conventional, or at least not uh, in my industry, um, and just how welcoming it was to different perspectives. That resonates with me. Um, I was attracted to Stanford primarily because of the Center for Social Innovation. I'm hoping to graduate with a certificate in public management and social innovation, and there are so many resources and courses here uh, that attracted me to the school initially. And then similar to what Maitane is saying, after conversations with friends who've gone to other business schools, the culture of Stanford really attracted me and kind of reminded me of um, the culture of Brown, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think I can second that. Um, as a joint degree student, I was really looking for a community that would be multidisciplinary, and I think Stanford, more than most other business schools, is exactly <clears throat> that. Uh, I also wanted to, I don't think I'm a very entrepreneurial person or big risk taker, but I definitely wanted to be exposed to those type of individuals and, and those type of ideas. And, you know, oh, I've been here for, what, about six months now, and I already feel as if, you know, um, I'm thinking a little bit more outside the box. I'm collaborating across different disciplines. And um, again, like, like Maitana said, it's, uh, the community is, is amazing and um, extremely supportive throughout the entire journey. Yeah, I, I think my points are, have kind of been covered. But as someone who didn't come from tech, didn't come from um, the, the startup world, grew up on the East Coast, worked in the Midwest, um, I, I was really looking for something to push me out of my comfort zone. Um, and that's something that I think has been fulfilled here and happens over and over again, um, <laughs> depending on which class I'm in or which, which group I'm, 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 I'm with at the moment. Um, and I can definitely echo, I've, I feel like I've, I'm so much more up to speed on um, you know, tech and, and, and um, entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff. Awesome, thank you. How certain were you on the career you wanted to pursue prior to starting your MBA? I had no idea. <laughs> um, consulting kind of fell into my lap naturally. Uh, the thing I enjoyed most about my last job, it was similar, it was client services. So you're advising people on communication strategies and really mission critical moments. Um, I realized I liked the dynamic environment and exposure to different, different industries. So consulting seemed a natural fit in terms of getting exposure to more quantitative analytical problems while still maintaining those client relationships and exposure to different industries. Though I no longer term nonprofit social sectors where I'd like to end up. For me, uh, I, I came in knowing I wanted to work in sports long term, and uh, that was great because ahead of time I was looking at you know which professors do I want to make connections with, um, you know which which alumni do I want to potentially create connections with. Uh, but as I've been here, uh, I've been I've been tempted so many times to to change my path drastically because you just get exposed to so many different industries and so many different areas that. Um, you know, Stanford can kind of help you um, work towards that. Uh, I, even though I was set going in, I had, I've had so many, so many times where I've, I've been challenged on that and have thought about so many different industries and, and areas. So, like I said, I am still figuring that part out. But what I, what I've really enjoyed about the process is that I think, I think a lot of the resources and a lot of the mindset at Stanford is to really work with your type of time, right? So people who know exactly what they want to go into um, and they're, they're super, super focused, they'll get the right resources to, to get there, you know, as efficiently and as right as possible. Um, whereas, you know, for other people who are exploring different like locations or different industries, there's also that, you know, that other approach to, to career management and career finding. Um, and so, you know, right now I'm just, looking at the different opportunities there is to explore locations and industries and really making the most out of it because you do have a lot of exposure to learn about different things here. Definitely. I definitely second what Danny was saying. I came in with a pretty clear mindset of what I wanted to do. I had done finance. I had no idea whether I wanted to do that again. I drastically left and went to you know the public sector, worked in nonprofit, and I find myself wanting to marry the two in some ways. So social impact investing kind of just made sense. But you know, as I've been here and I've as explored different paths, and what I think Stanford does a really good job of is showing you many different paths and making them very tangible. So you kind of know exactly what to do if you want to get to different directions, and you get to talk to a lot of different people, especially your classmates, about what they did before. So you see yourself taking kind of the passions that you think you had coming in, but finding other places to set them. Yeah. Um, so you know, now I'm, I'm still considering different options. Impact investing still is something I want to try out, but I'm definitely now more open than I was coming yeah. in. And to that point, uh, Talking to classmates has been probably the one of the best resources, um, you know, in, in terms of figuring out careers and, and figuring out um, you know what industries might suit you best. Um, and everyone, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but I feel like everyone here has been so open and so um, welcoming about like sharing their experience and like grabbing coffee with you for for thirty minutes to talk about their what they've done in the past and all that kind of stuff, which has been really helpful. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I agree. I think I think what's also interesting is that you get a lot of people who are super sure about what they wanted to do, but just going through that process that you talked about of like being exposed to a, a whole range of different things just gets 
them to be like super sure about it or like it really does like spark something new and there's people mm -hmm. who've like made pivots and just changed completely what they thought they would go into coming in here. So I think that's really cool. Totally. Yeah. And to like add to that really briefly, you know, I think the coolest part too is that everyone's going through the same journey here. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. in, in your old jobs you feel like you were an outlier because maybe you weren't sure if you fit and you wanted to pivot. Maybe you were the only one that goes to business school. But here, everyone's going through the same journey. So it's really cool to kind of go through that journey with other people. So even if you feel like there's never enough time to go through everything, you can see other journeys and see if they actually fit with you. And it's just a great experience. Yeah. yeah. Add something One answer? quick thing, a plug for sort of the institutional resources at Stanford. Beyond the Career Management Center, you also have access to schools across the street, which are the other grad schools at Stanford. So like the design school, for instance, can really um, help shape your thinking around like visualizing the life that you want. And I think that's really unique to Stanford as a business school student. Absolutely. I can echo that I've felt so inspired here. And uh, yeah, at, at times even a bit distracted, like, oh, maybe <laughs> I should do that, or that sounds interesting, because um, there's just so much going on. And, uh, we know that the MBA is a general degree, right, and a degree where leadership, the leadership skills that we're learning here are really going to be applicable to many different career paths. Um, one of our questions is, what have you learned about leadership that you didn't already know? Mm -hmm. So what have you learned here at Stanford that you didn't already know about leadership specifically? I'll start again. Um, so to give a, a little background on kind of a, a class we all take first quarter called um, Leadership Labs, so you work in a small team of five or six students um, you know, that typically come from um, a wide variety of backgrounds. And you work through different role plays and through different exercises. Um, you give each other all kinds of feedback. You have an MBA two who's been trained on, 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 on leadership and, and these topics that's kind of overseeing the group. And um, it's really a crash course on leadership is the way I look at it uh, throughout the whole first quarter. And to answer your question, I think the, the one thing I learned was how to strategically bring out, uh, how to strategically facilitate bringing out the best of everyone on your team and making sure that, um, you know, one person isn't taking up too much space or one person, you know, who may, may not be as inclined to interrupt someone or, um, you know, speak their mind um, extremely openly, how to bring out, um, how to bring out and kind of balance the conversation to make sure you're getting diverse perspectives and the best out of everyone. Yeah. Uh, echoing what Danny's saying in terms of leadership labs was a really inspiring and also transformative course for me, I'd say. Um, what I took away from it is that anyone can be a leader. You can come in and be more introverted, more extroverted, but it really provides people with a platform to experiment with different styles which I thought was an awesome opportunity. And uh, one other thing is we're filmed a few times in that class, so <laughs> it's very fun and gra uh, humbling to see yourself <laughs> on screen uh, with classmates. So um, yeah, that's probably what I've learned. And not to uh, continue the love fest on Lead Labs, but I completely oh. echo everything <laughs> yeah. here. So uh, you know, for some context, Lead Labs, you, you provide feedback with each other. And mm -hmm. I found very similar to what Madison said, that anyone could be a leader. And I found myself actually, you know, pivoting my own leadership style based on the things that I saw in others that I really mm -hmm. admired. So for example, there was someone who was quiet, confident, more laid back, a more of a lean in, kind of louder person. And I found myself really wanting to spend time with this other person to learn how do they manage the stressful environments when they're leading back. And the cool part was he was like, hey, I actually really wanted to learn how you lean in. <laughs> and you know, just learning how to adapt yourself to, to different situations and really start to read the rooms and understand, okay, this is, you know, leadership is all about adaptation. So, you know, when when to be that quiet leader, when to be that that louder leader, when to be a listener, when to be a questioner. Um, so all that kind of adaptation that kind of comes through Lead Labs was a great place to kind of, you know, to, to experiment, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about Lead Labs. Um, <laughs> so I think I think what you learn a lot here. I mean, you learn a lot about yourself. I think that's true of. A, a lot of programs, but I think what's unique here is that um, the when we talk, speak about the culture, 
I think it has a lot of emphasis on not only your self-awareness, but also in having other people participate in that transformation, right? So, so when we talk about how to provide feedback, how to help people along their journey, and how to like also bring in your, your own journey to other people, um, I think that's what's really important. I think Stanford really tries to make you um, kind of cross certain like boundaries that you may have set for yourself, like big boundaries that you're like, oh, I would never tell this to someone or I would never have this conversation because it's very difficult. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in, in situations where you are going to cross that line, but in a, in a really positive way, right? In a positive way that makes you grow and really makes you um, work better and, and just be more aware of, of how you interact with others. So I think for me, that's been the biggest like part in like leadership development here. That's awesome, thanks for sharing. And um, another question we've received is uh, about a best or most memorable course. I know you already mentioned Lead Labs at depth, at length, so <laughs> maybe beyond Lead Labs, a best or most memorable class that you've taken so far. I really like um, Formation of New Ventures here. So um, the format of the class is that you have, so, so the objective is that you're going to learn about the different uh, the different ways that uh, startups uh, underwent this this whole like uh, journey from idea to to financing to setting up their teams to everything that set them up either for success or not success. Um, and so the, what the professors do is they bring in the entrepreneurs, right? So the people who actually went through this uh, will come to class, and then you'll they'll talk about uh, you know how how they set up their teams, what was important, what did they learn, what were like tough moments. And then you get to interview also a, a, like an entrepreneur of, of your choosing. So it's a really, it's a different format of class. And I really enjoy the fact that the people uh, who actually, you know, were in the case studies would come to class and talk to you about their experience. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, sort of mirroring that, I took Formation of Impact Ventures, which was the oh. same model, but focused on social impact organizations, which was amazing. Uh, so I won't repeat too much, because it sounds like the same format, which was incredible. Uh, but I really enjoyed Product Launch, which is the advanced marketing class. It was a nice opportunity to apply what we had learned in the fall quarter to, um, to in terms of strategy, financials, et cetera, to figure out a, how, how a product goes from, again, idea to an actual company. So I enjoyed that. Yeah, so I would say for me, my favorite class was so far fiscal policy. So as someone who's doing public policy masters, I have no policy experience. So it was actually <laughs> my first like foyer into policy. And um, it's taught by Keith Ennessy, who was you know, pretty high up in the Bush administration, had tons of real life experience. And the way he ran the class was almost like a mock Senate or a mock Congress where you know, it was a lot of cold calling, kind of nervous at first, but you, know, you find yourself speaking uh, you know, as if you're a congressman or, or you're, you're pitching an idea or a policy, then you leave class and say like, wow, like I learned a ton. <laughs> and um, you know, I just think the, the way that the class was set up and the fact that it was not necessarily something that was business specific, but kind of out of the realm, just made me appreciate the classmates that I had even more, like all the experience we brought in um, that had nothing to do with the kind of traditional business, like finance or something like that. Awesome. Yeah, I've heard great things about all those classes, but I haven't taken any of them, so <laughs> got to get them on my list for next year. Um, so my favorite class so far, without a doubt, has been um, the sports management class. Mm -hmm. So it's taught by um, George Foster as well as two uh, practitioners. So the way that works is we have a, a, a regular Stanford professor um, accompanied with one or two um, industry leaders. So that, that'll that happen in, in a, a, a bunch of classes, especially in electives. Um, and our two practitioners were Dave Cavill, who's the president of the Oakland A's, and Sam Hinkie, who's former general manager for the Philadelphia 76ers. And what I liked so much about the class was, so aside from having these people who have done so much in the industry and, and, are, and are, are such big names, um, was it was really guest speaker led. So we'd have a different guest speaker or two every week. Um, we had people including the president of the San Francisco Giants. We had um, leaders from the WNBA, leaders from uh, really all the major sports in, in the US and um, some internationally. And the class was almost just a conversation between the students, the professor, the practitioners, and our guests. And it really, um, gave us a, a, an inside look into all these different industries. And if, if you're interested in the sports industry, it's 
such a no-brainer class. And if you're just interested in sports in general, it's just a fascinating um, view into the world that you just typically just don't get. That's great. Yeah, and I'll add that I think it's funny that we're all, all our favorite classes are so tied to the things that we're interested in. Uh, one of my favorite classes that I've taken so far is called Family Business, and it's taught by a GSB grad, Leo Lindbeck, who flew out from Texas every week to teach this to us. Um, and what was really interesting for me was that his perspectives were so different, and you know, it's like a different vantage point from tech. And so it was really fun to hear his take on how you run and grow family businesses. Um, so pivoting a little bit away from the classroom setting, um, another question has come in about beyond the HBSA, what types of organizations and or resources are available at Stanford for Hispanic students? Let's speak a little bit of that. Yeah, so I mean, for me, there's there's a center on campus, El Centro Chicano y Latino. So it's it's for the general community at large. So they they have tons of events, cultural events. It's a space that you kind of just use, go and hang out. You'll meet a ton of folks from other programs. So I mean, I I think maybe I met two other MBAs, and everyone else was from other programs. So it's just another space and another avenue to explore to get to know the broader community at Stanford, um, the Latino community at Stanford. So that, that's one thing I would definitely say was a, was a good find and a really cool place to be. I would say for, for my experience, uh, being from Mexico City, just the joint, the joint collaborations that there are between HBSA and LASA, which is the Latin American Student Association, are just a great way of um, kind of understanding those two different perspectives. And there are two communities that are really supportive with each other. So those things, I think, are also great resources to um, you know, make advantage of. Yeah, and then I know HBSA last week had a mixer bringing together uh, different Latino gr groups from different grad programs. So that was a fun way to meet people, and I think we're planning to do more of those events this year. Yeah, and I couldn't make it, but I know that um, students from the law school were there. Mm -hmm. The medical, the medical school. school. Yeah. Engineering is also there. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Okay, next question is about um, Stanford and how Stanford helps foster diversity and inclusion. Can you guys speak to that? Sure, I mean, so starting I believe in week zero, there's a kickoff uh, event called Engage, which brings together practitioners who do diversity, um, equity, and inclusion work outside, uh, outside in the Bay Area. They're consultants for different companies. So that's a day-long presentation where you're with your section and you go through different exercises just to establish um, a culture of inclusivity in your section and then hopefully that extends to your class. Uh, I'm a member of the diversity committee as part of the student association, so I have a vantage point or planning for next year, so we're planning to continue that program and build upon it in some exciting ways. Beyond that, um, there are a number of student identity groups like HBSA, like LASA, like BBSA, which is the Black Business Student Association. Uh, so I think that those groups all run fantastic events that recur throughout the year. So you get a consistent feeling of inclusivity and belonging throughout your class, but also um, between classes, MBA1s and MBA2s. Um, we're also working with the administration to push different initiatives forward to recruit even more diverse viewpoints and students to come into future classes. Yeah, and I, I would give another push towards kind of the admissions process. Um, I've been blown away by the diversity of our class, um, both you know, physical diversity, ethnic diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of background. Um, really, any anything you're interested in uh, on the background piece, anything you're interested in, there's magically someone who has that has deep knowledge in that specific area, which always blows my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really think that that the admissions team does a fantastic job of bringing in um, people from all over the world with, with all different kinds of experiences, um, all different kinds of strengths, weaknesses, and, and, and career plans and aspirations. Um, and I think that makes for really, um, you know, really strong uh, group dynamics and um, kind of a, a safe space to kind of be different and have different ideas, different thoughts. And just to, just to add on that, um, I also think that if, if you find that the group, an identity group or something doesn't exist on campus, you can create it and you'll find the people that fit that group. So I'm working with some students here to start the first generation low income group. We, we haven't had one before. 
We weren't sure exactly what the interest would be. We sent out an email. We got about 50 responses back. and uh, Over 100. Over 100 now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So over 100 now of people who are either, you know, identify as such or want to be advocates of such a program. So, you know, just just the fact that we were able to do that, just put it in place, you know, it was it was a fairly smooth transition between us and, and administration. Um, and, you know, just, just again, it's diversity continues to change and evolve. I think um, you'll, you'll be able to find a place on campus to, to create what you want. Yeah. See. I think what I would add is just outside the formal structures of like clubs and, and societies and associations, um, I think there's a real interest in from people who um, just to understand other perspectives, right? So like, for example, I think I see here more than um, in other schools or perhaps um, just in other experiences I've had, like that people will really, you know, go above and beyond to to uh, understand a different perspective. So they'll be like, okay, let's organize like small group dinners to talk about this particular topic that perhaps we're not really, you know, digging deep enough to, to understand it. Um, or let's organize Ask Me Anything or let's do a, X type of event or can you share with us what it's like to work in uh, this country or this other mm -hmm. country. And I think that interest and that um, how, yeah, like how, how curious and how open the community is and how much it translates that curiosity into something tangible that people can take away with them it really helps with diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. and just on, you know, bringing all of these things together into your MBA experience. Absolutely. And can you just expand on what Ask Me Anythings are for our audience that they may oh, not know? Sure. Um, so it is like it's an informal session where, you know, somebody will volunteer and you can ask them anything for about nine minutes. Um, and so it's just an opportunity to get to know people better. Like, I think I've been asked really interesting questions from my background, from places I've lived in. And I've also, you know, unexpectedly found out something really random about a classmate. For example, uh, one of my classmates, uh, it turns out he used to play uh, classic music, like, professionally. And we had no clue he, he was a musician. So you'll always find out something really interesting and really fun about someone. But also, like, you can... You can really, you know, understand a perspective when it comes to diversity a lot better. Absolutely. And one of the favorite questions for AMAs is always, what matters most to you and why, right? <laughs> Which might um, sound familiar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, another question that's come in and kind of going off of what you were saying, David, um, was about any of us being first-time MBAs in our family. And if so, how did um, you navigate some of the challenges of the application and internship process? So maybe by a show of hands, who's a first-time MBA in your family? Okay, great. So can we speak to a little bit of the challenges and what we, how, how we overcame them? Yeah, so I can start. So I think for me, you know, navigating these waters for the first time, there's always kind of, you deal with a lot of different things. One, you may not understand how the process works. Another part is self-doubt um, and, and really not sure where you're going to fit into the pile of amazing applicants. And, um, you know, what, what, I, what I did is I really, I, I, first thing I think is important is to understand that being vulnerable throughout the entire process is power. So whether it be reaching out to, to alumni and asking questions or, you know, putting yourself out there at an admissions event to talk to the admissions officer and ask the questions that you really, really need to understand and know. Um, going in and breaking down your own narrative and owning that narrative, um, I think, are all part of the application process that, um, truly allowed me to grow into not just being comfortable applying or going through the challenges, but also just kind of saying, owning myself and my story, regardless of whether I was going to get into Stanford or not. Um, so I think that was really big for me. Um, I also had a little bit of fun with it, right? So my family didn't know what an MBA was. So I had fun educating them and kind of like walking them through the process. And I brought them in to kind of the application process and, and having that support, even if it's not, you know, well, when I applied to an MBA, I did this. But just saying like, hey, like, what do you think about this story? You remember when this happened? And we would kind of reminisce and, and you know, really help me think through my narrative and story. So I think even if your family or the people around you are not quite familiar with it, bring them into the process because in the end of the day, it's about owning your narrative and your story. That was really well put, um, <laughs> hard to follow. I think I would echo what David just said, but I would really emphasize, don't be shy about turning to mentors and seeking those people out, whether or not they have an MBA. Um, 
I had to explain the decision to my family and they didn't understand like, oh, but you went to a good undergrad program, why do you need this degree? And I realized I wasn't happy in the career I had chosen and that I needed an MBA to pivot to things that I cared, or rather, I wanted an MBA in order to affect change at a greater scale and towards something that I cared about. Um, so I really relied on my mentors that I had cultivated in um, both the office setting but also from years before in undergrad. And they were really helpful in terms of navigating the process and again, like helping me flesh out my story, like David said, and not being shy about being vulnerable and honest about the experiences that had shaped me and why I thought I would be a good candidate here. I think another thing to look into is there are programs out there that, that help um, specifically um, black and Hispanic uh, potential MBA applicants like MLT, Management Leaders for Tomorrow. So, um, you know, to David's point and, and to Madison's point, seek out, um, you know, informal mentors, um, you know, put yourself out there and, and, and really look for ways that, that you can, um, you know, become more informed on the MBA application process to give yourself um, kind of the opportunity to put your best foot forward. Yeah, and I, I don't want to speak for the group, but folks who are watching, I, I'd be happy to talk to anyone who's watching who has questions. Definitely. Same. <laughs> um, you can always get in touch with us, and we'll have more information about how to get in touch with us towards the end. Um, okay, so first, you know, in our families to get MBAs, navigating which programs to choose. We're now at Stanford. What's been most surprising about this experience? Um, was there anything unexpected? the degree of personal change than the program ignites. I mean, like, we all go in here um, wanting to uh, refine and, and improve our, like, soft skills, leadership skills, and you expect all that, but I don't think that uh, you really understand, like, how much you're putting yourself up to, you know, expose yourself to, to, to really question perhaps, like, fundamental things about yourself or about your career. So it may be like what we spoke about, that you may just have a complete you know, 180 change of what you want to do in life. But it may also be things like you may uh, understand something about yourself through this whole like um, leadership development or through other interactions that you didn't know or you hadn't thought about it before or you hadn't recognized what impact it has on others. And so that really feels like this, you know, this motivation and this passion to, to grow and to challenge yourself. But it's, you know, sometimes it's tough because you're going to have to make difficult decisions about your career and, you know, your personal life and, and yourself. But I think that's what's great. You know, it was a surprise that it would be such a big scale, like, change perhaps. But, um, but it's something really satisfying. So I would echo a lot of what she just said. Um, you know, like I said, I, I believe that vulnerability is power. That's why I was attracted to Stanford. I had no idea. I was not prepared for how much that was the case. So, yeah. you know, we discuss AMAs. There's also a talk series where, you know, one of our classmates will go up and share their narrative. And even in Lee Labs, like, I think all of us cried in Lee Labs at one point. And there's, you know, Touchy Feely, which is a class I haven't taken yet. Apparently everyone cries. So like, here we go again. <laughs> and, you know, I just think that's really unique to Stanford. I, I don't know many other, you know, I, talk, I know I have a lot of friends with other MBA programs. I don't think that's always the case. And one thing I would also add, too, is how much resources are available here. I think you also have an idea that an MBA program is going to have a lot of great resources. But if I think of something, it exists. And, um, and it's something that's valuable and I can take advantage of. So I think, you know, allowing yourself to be open to everything and to really look for the resources that are out there already. I mean. Um, there's just so much to take advantage of that that was one of the biggest surprises for me. Yeah. Um, I've been surprised by how much learning takes place outside of the classroom. And I think we said that a lot in the beginning. But our classmates have really been such a source of insight, different perspective, out of our comfort zones. Oftentimes you'll find yourself at a small group dinner and realize, like, or I found myself at a small group dinner, like, oh, I'm the only American here. <laughs> and just the learning and the openness that people bring to the table has shocked me. I think I've also been really surprised at how busy we've been yeah. and <laughs> just how, how much we're constantly forced to make trade-offs. Like we talked about the, the mixer that HBSA mm -hmm. hosted the other night and I couldn't make it because there were literally three other things happening and there was this wonderful screening taking place um, that uh, a, a film, a documentary called Groomed, 
um, that a GSB alumna um, put together, and I just couldn't miss it. But I think I've been really surprised at the amount, the optionality, I guess, and just yeah. like all the things happening, um, and really the the reality that we can't take it all in. And I'm reminded of how you know Disneyland wasn't designed to allow you to like go on every ride in one day or in even a week. Um, and, and the GSB is that way. We have two short years here, and it's really not designed for you to take every class and do everything, but to kind of make your own, you know, pick what you want from the buffet kind of thing. I think you guys completely covered everything I, I thought of. Yeah. Cool. So um, we have a career question. How does the campus recruiting process work at the GSB, and what types of resources does Stanford offer? I can kick this one off. So there's all different. There's a few different types of processes. Um, so one, there are, uh, are a set of companies and a set of industries that will do formal on-campus recruiting. Um, they'll have info sessions in perhaps in around November or December. Um, they have formal application processes and, and interview processes that th that they've been doing and coordinating with Stanford career team for for years and years and years. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the stuff like consulting and investment banking, um, some of the tech companies. And then aside from that, um, we have, um, I think one, one of the best resources is just the alumni. Um, so I've, I've been blown away. I guess one of the things that surprised me most is how, uh, how helpful the alumni have been and how responsive they've been when I just cold reach out um, via email to, to an alum that's in an industry that's um, relevant for me. Uh, so th that's been a great source. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a never-ending list um, of, of of internships, and so we're, we're all first year, so we're we're more experienced with the internship uh, recruiting process. But um, a, a never-ending list of of internships um, posted that you know kind of scroll through and have alerts set up to kind of forward me stuff that's in a location or industry I'm interested in. Um, and then lastly, sorry to take all the oh, take fine. so many of these, but um, we have a pretty large um, career team, and um, no matter the industry you're in, how how large or how small, um, there is a uh, a career advisor dedicated to your industry. So, um, for sports, for example, there's maybe only a couple people each year that are interested in that. There's actually a career advisor who I met with yesterday, um, who specializes in sports. So. Um, that's, that's been a great resource for me as well. And then on the flip side, there's also someone on the career team, or a team on the career, on, um, on the Stanford career team that uh, works on reaching out to different companies and um, establishing formal, formal connections with, be, between them and Stanford. And again, there's, there's someone dedicated to sports, despite how, how, how niche it might, it might seem. I think that was a very thorough explanation of the resources. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's great. Uh, one thing I would add, we have Blast Email, which is a, a sort of a list that connects all the MBA ones, MBA twos, and people just throw different opportunities out from their old companies, et cetera, and even networking with students in our class or MBA twos. They'll know someone yep. who knows someone um, who's looking for an intern. So that's a good resource as well as student clubs, I would say, um, but beyond that, I think Danny covered it. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I would add, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that I'm doing this summer, is uh, taking advantage of the global experiences. So there's uh, GMEX, mm -hmm. which is the opportunity for you to go and work for a company um, for a minimum of four weeks in a different country that you've never like lived or worked in. Um, and so it just gives you the chance to you know, explore a new location, perhaps a new um, industry. Uh, it's a really it's a really easy way to to do that, and so there's GMEX, which is through the GSB. There's also kind of broader Stanford opportunities, um, like through Seed, which is uh, a program that we have to help uh, entrepreneurs in the developing world, like um, build up their um, management skill set, and then towards the end of the program, they get access to offer internships as well to the Stanford community. So then that's something that business students can also tap into if they're interested in, in uh, working in emerging markets. Yeah, I guess one thing to add, it's not necessarily a formal resource, but I would say there's a lot of things that happen here that are informal. So mm -hmm. the cool thing mm -hmm. about going to Stanford and having a Stanford MBA is that the majority of people you reach out to, whether it's a cold email or something of that nature, they'll reach 
back out to you. So I'm going into um, an industry that there's not a lot of like recruiting that goes on. So a lot of it had to be me hitting the ground. And I know it sounds kind of intimidating at first, but you realize like that's kind of part of being at Stanford and being in the entrepreneurial environment. There's also a lot of other classmates who I think, you know, for a lot of folks coming to an MBA, they feel like, okay, an MBA is kind of the means to the end. And you realize like the MBA is a means in and of itself. And folks will come in thinking that they're ready to hit this recruiting cycle. And then you talk to them now, they're kind of like, yeah, you know, um, I'm just going to start my own thing. Or I'm going to create my own project for the summer. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to join a startup to try something new. So I think that's another thing that is unspoken, but I think a lot of things happen in that avenue as well. Yeah. And, and to that point on the entrepreneurship part, um, something we didn't touch on mm -hmm. was there's a wealth of resources for people who want to start their own companies or work for um, for, for small, start -up, small startups over the summer or, or full time. Um, so there's, there's certainly mm -hmm. no lack of, of resources for entrepreneurs as well. Great, and we're coming towards the end of this, um, our time t together today. Um, one question that I think would be great to kind of round this out, knowing what you know now about Stanford and the GSB and this experience, if you could start all over again, rewind back to September, is there anything you would do differently? Or even maybe rewind back through the application process mm. um, before, you, yeah, what would you do differently? I think going back to your point about the resources and, and the optionality, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time thinking about the path that I at least wanted to start on when I got here. Mm. I think for the first like month or two, I came kind of thinking, let's be completely open-minded. There's too much. <laughs> it's, it's so hard to be completely open-minded and you start to get FOMO because you're making too many trade-offs. I think had I spent maybe a little bit more time in the front end just exploring what actually existed, um, you know, coming in with some type of plan to then pivot from would have been really helpful. I'd second that, but I, I think I, I had it from a different, slightly different take, which was I think we're, a lot of people or the majority of people here are used to being able to you know, do everything in a very short amount of time and being very efficient. And so sometimes you're under the illusion that you will be able to do everything once you're here and you're not. And so I think just taking the time, I think taking some time, A, just to like, you know, shift gears before coming to business school, really getting your priorities, uh, you know, set and that you're able to articulate just what you're working towards or what you don't know that you want to explore. It's really important um, because, yeah, you won't be able to do everything and just being able to prioritize makes a huge difference. Yeah, those are certainly, well, that's definitely what I would do differently starting at the GSP, but looking back to the application process, um, I think it would have been more useful for me to start the essay drafting process sooner and really key into what story I wanted to tell. Because I think it's important to tell a story in your essay, and that occurred to me a little later in the process, so I wish I had brainstormed that a bit more strategically. Taking it back to the, to the GSB, uh, one thing I wish I would have done differently, uh, I, I think I realized um, later than I would have wanted to how open alums and professors are um, to get coffee with you, to meet up with you, um, et cetera. And I'm, I still have another year to go to, to do this, um, but I'm just now starting to have informal conversations with alums, have um, you know, breakfast and coffee with, with professors in, in my industry. Um, and I wish I would have taken, taken advantage of that from day one as opposed to um, in quarter, quarter three. That's awesome. I think I would echo all of that. Um, and I'm so grateful for the time we got to spend it t together today. So thank you for joining. And um, thank you to our audience for, for participating in this event and for your great questions. Thank you for um, joining us today. Have a great day.